We have spewed massive amounts of CO2 and methane and nitrous oxide into the atmosphere of this planet to create this industrial way of life. And now we have so much CO2, methane, and nitrous oxide in the atmosphere that it's blocking the sun's heat from getting off the earth. We are in real-time climate change. This is no longer a theory. This is no longer looming on the horizon. This is no longer imminent. Climate change is now at the house, in the door. What's terrifying about climate change, and unfortunately it's never explained because if it were explained, our human family would be justifiably terrified and motivated and driven to begin to transform this planet. Climate change changes the water cycles of the Earth. That's what this is all about. It's never explained. We're the watery planet. Our satellite probes go to other planets, and what's the first thing we look for? Water. No water, not interested. Recently, they discovered what they think is dirty water on Mars, and everybody is thrilled. Our ecosystems on Earth have developed over millions of years based on the water cycles, the cloud cycles that traverse them across the Earth. For every one degree that the temperature of the planet goes up because of industrial-induced CO2 emissions, for every one degree that the temperature goes up on this planet, the atmosphere is actually sucking up 7% more precipitation from the ground. The heat is forcing the precipitation into the clouds, so we're getting more concentrated precipitation, more violent water events, but they're more infrequent, throwing the entire water cycle of the Earth off kilter. More blockbuster winter snows. Eight feet in Boston that last season? My gosh. More dramatic spring floods. That flood in the Carolinas, remember? They said this flood only will occur once every thousand years. It's the new normal. More prolonged summer droughts. My wife and I were in British Columbia and we're coming into Vancouver and the pilot says, we have some smoke coming in. And I turned to my wife and I said, he means smog. No, he meant smoke. Wildfires from British Columbia to California. Summer drought and wildfire. We have category three, four, and five hurricanes now, so dramatic that they're destroying infrastructure and killing people all over the world. That hurricane that hit the Philippines, this was the most powerful hurricane ever recorded, this is the new normal. What I'm saying here is that climate change is dramatically changing the water cycles. They're on an exponential curve. This is absolutely frightening. It's terrifying. And if you are a young millennial about to start a family, if you're a parent here or a grandparent, I want you to listen to this. Our scientists now tell us that we are in the sixth extinction event of life on Earth. It doesn't even make the headlines. This is the most dramatic story the human family has ever faced. There have been five mass extinction events on Earth in 450 million years, and each time the chemistry of the planet shifts very quickly. There's what we call a turning point and massive die-out. And after the massive die-out of life, it takes upwards of 10 million years to get new life back on Earth. Our scientists now tell us we are in the sixth extinction event. This is not a model, we're chronicling it in real time. And what they're saying is that over the next seven decades, and many of you will be around for a lot of that, and your children will, in the next seven decades, we could lose over half the species of life that now inhabit this little oasis in the universe. As my wife says, we just are not grasping the enormity of this moment. We might acknowledge climate change, but we're going on as business as usual with a little greenwashing. 99.5% of all the species that have ever been on this planet have come and gone. Those are not good odds. And what's interesting is human beings, we're the, we're the actual youngest species, we're the babies. 
anatomically modern humans have only been here about 200,000 years. There's no guarantee we're going to make this. And the new studies that have just come out, they're even more terrifying because they're seeing the freshwater melts in the Arctic now, in Greenland, and now in Antarctica much quicker than we expected, changing the ocean currents. And they're talking about storms that are beyond anything we can imagine that we've ever seen in human history by the end of this century. Talking about the major coastal cities where much of our urban population is underwater. This is not a century from now. This is in the lifetime of many young people who are four and five now and will be my age when we're in full steam into this new era, this abyss. So what do we do? We need a new economic vision for the world. It has to be compelling. We need a game plan to deploy that vision, and it needs to be quick. It needs to move as quickly in the developing countries as in the industrialized nations. If we have any chance of arresting the worst of this climate change, we're going to have to be off carbon in four decades, everywhere. This is beyond anything we're talking about at global conferences. How do we begin to tackle something of this magnitude? 